Campers today will talk about a very important wilderness skill. The safe and sane way to roast a marshmallow. Step one, tear open the plastic bag. All you have to have to do is apply a little bit of a little bit of strength. Yes, that's right. You need some strength there. Wisely, you see, the, the manufacturers have made this bag childproof. But applying the simple laws of physics, you'll have this sucker open in no time. Whoa! Let's go right to step two, the, the safe way to put out a campfire. <laughs> Fires are no laughing matter, I can tell you. If you don't believe me, let me tell you a little story. The campers, Nurse Molly and I, were preparing to cook breakfast at the edge of Camp Candy's very own geyser, Old Faithful. Oh, isn't this exciting, Iggy? Eating in the wilderness? <laughs> It'll be a nice switch from having the wilderness eating us. Okay, campers, this is it. Old Faithful Geyser. <laughs> Let me see. Whoa, 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 whoa. Goodness gracious. <laughs> On second thought, uh, maybe we ought to eat indoors, huh? <laughs> The campers weren't too happy about their breakfast falling into a geyser. I don't blame them. I would have been pretty steam, too. Hey, guys, don't look so glum. We're going to do something that's even more fun than a cookout. I'm going to show you how to uh, cook oatmeal. Oh! Gag me with the cereal spoon. Barf time. Oatmeal, the food of love. Oh, man. This nurse needs a doctor. Now you stir the oatmeal till it's just the right consistency. Yeah, lumpy and gooey. Next, you add the slightest pinch of sugar. Er, uh, sugar. Yes, sweetheart? <laughs> I, I meant, um, please hand me the sugar. Um... Oh, uh, yes. Oh, of course. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew that's what you meant. It was then that Iggy's imagination started to run away with him. John! John! Not now, Iggy. I'm trying to bring this oatmeal to a boil. We've got to get off this island. The volcano gods are angry. <laughs> volcano gods. Sure. What an imagination this kid has, volcano gods. <laughs> what the? This is Houston Central. We have liftoff. Wow! <laughs> Now, kids, don't panic. Um, remember, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. That and a whole lot of oatmeal. Ugh. Things quickly got worse. The flames grew and rapidly spread to the rest of the kitchen. The kids tried to help put it out. But it was no use. We had to run for it. You know what they say. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Before you knew it, the entire kitchen was in flames. I think it was the saddest day of my life. On the other hand, it was a happy day for Rex DeForest III. <laughs> I can't believe it! Candy has gone and set fire to his own camp. <laughs> he saved me the trouble of doing it myself. Oh, gee, that was really thoughtful of him, huh? He didn't do it on purpose, your bug brain. It happened because he's a world-class klutz. Just think, Chester. Now I'll be able to buy that property at a bargain price. Uh, you mean kind of like a fire sale? <laughs> yes, that's it exactly. A fire sale. Hello, is this the fire inspector? I'd like to report a serious safety violation at Camp Candy. Rex DeForest didn't waste any time in reporting the disaster. Boy, what a snitch! <laughs> hey, Bozo, where's the fire? <laughs> we finally put out the fire, but not before losing most of the kitchen. Ah, what a tragic sight. I think it was the saddest day of my life. You said that before. Well, it bears repeating. Oh, good heavens! What's that? It's the local fire truck. Great! Where was it when we needed one? You the owner of this place? Yes, sir. I'm the head counselor of Camp Candy. You mean the former Camp Candy, don't you? Former Camp? Well, 
says right here, clear as day. Camps have got to have a kitchen. No kitchen, no camp. What are you saying? I'm saying, if you don't have a brand spanking new kitchen standing on this spot in exactly one week, I'm closing this camp for good. Have a nice day. One week to build an entire kitchen? How are we supposed to do that? We can use my knife. It's got plenty of tools. I'm afraid it'll take more than that, Alex. Yeah, a small item like dinero. I'm afraid you're right. Oh, John, what are you going to do? Nurse Molly, there's nothing to do but throw in the towel. I'm afraid this really is the end of Camp Candy. Maybe I'd given up hope, but my faithful camper sure hadn't. For even at that very moment, an emergency meeting was taking place. But we can't let them shut down Camp Candy. There must be something we can do. Maybe we can raise some money. You're right! A renaissance! I'll run up and down the mountain for three cents a mile. I've got a better idea. A formal black tie fundraiser at $500 a plate. I say we have a rock concert. We'll call it KitchenAid. Hey, why don't we just go dig for gold? Forget it. Gold reminds me of tooth fillings. And that reminds me of dentists. Wait a minute. Binky's right. We can dig for gold. Remember that story John once told us about Copperhead Cave, where all the gold is hidden? That's just what it was, a story. Well, I say it's worth a try. What about you, Vanessa? You coming along? Natural mo. What woman could be cold to gold? Meanwhile, Rex DeForest III was gloating. His dream of one day taking over Camp Candy seemed to be coming true. Chester, hand me a cement mixer. Uh, cement mixer. Cement mixer. Ah, uh, here you go, boss. Good. I want to see how Camp Candy will look as a parking lot for my condos. Gee, boss, you ruined a perfectly good tabletop scale model doing that. That's what I do best, ruin things. I didn't know it at the time, but the kids had climbed Mount Frostback, determined to find gold and save the camp. But what they didn't know was that they were being watched by a scary-looking character. Yeah, who's that poking around my mountain? They better not be looking for gold. It's a bunch of kids. I hate kids. I hate singing kids even worse. You guys, do we have to sing on the way to this mine? I feel like one of the seven dwarfs. You can knock it off now. This is Copperhead Cave. I can see why it's called Copperhead. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's check it out. Go into a cave? But those places are full of blood-sucking bats and hairy tarantulas and, worst of all, cave monsters. Chill out, Iggy. Follow me, everyone. Oh, goodness, this place is dreary. It certainly could use a good interior decorator. <laughs> and damp, too. I just know I'm gonna catch pneumonia. Hey, look, somebody lost a bow tie. Better yet, it's a bat. See, what did I tell you? Oh, it came it out of my hair. Don't sweat it. It probably hates frizzy hair as much as you do. Here, Batty, nice little bat. I won't hurt you. Roman, don't. It might bite you and turn you into a vampire. Oh, it's just a baby. See? There's nothing to be afraid of. That's what you think. I was right. It is a monster. The kids were huddled in fear. They were sure this was it. They were about to become victims of the cave monster. What are you doing in my cave? She's just shaking in her boots. We thought you were a cave monster. Yeah, Hiram's the name. Sorry to throw such a scare into you. <laughs> you kind of forget your company manners after 57 years. 57 years? Yeah, that's how long I've been prospecting in these hills. And you're the first living souls I've seen. So, uh, Hiram, what did you do with all that gold you dug up? Gold? Uh, who said I found any gold? Uh, did I say I found gold? Well, no, but... That's why I left civilization. There are too many dead, blame questions. Wait, Mr. Hiram, come back. We just want to be your friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't need no friends. Especially little ones like you. They, they get on the foot. Smooth movement. All your talk
talk about gold scared him away. Good. That old geezer gave me the willies. Now, let's head back to camp. He said himself there's no gold in his cave. Iggy, you found it! You struck gold! It's as big as a baseball! Now we can pay for a new kitchen and save the camp. Goodness, imagine me, a millionaire. Now what would I do with all that money? Okay, everyone can go home. I wonder how I ought to spend it. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime offer. Order your video of Alex Pumps Iron for preteens. Free to the first 8 million people who call. Imagine me, a millionaire. I wonder what I should do with all that money. And I'll have one of those diamonds and a bracelet, and two of those platinum watches, and a dozen of those silk blouses, one in each color. I can't believe it. An actual million dollars. Mine. Oh, mine. Now, what shall I build first? The Earthway Proof Farm Shelter? The 100% germ-free allergy club? Not so fast. First, there's income tax, then federal tax, then city tax, oh, then state no. tax, then property tax, and then tax. No. Mm. We'll send you a bill for our services. Oh, what a nightmare. Having money is a real burden. It sure is, Sonny. Hiram, you came back. Yeah, that's right. The truth is, after talking to you kids, I, I realize just how lonely my life's been. Well, it doesn't have to be lonely anymore. We'll be your friends. Right, guys? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Hiram. Yeah. And Hiram, maybe we'll even buy you some decent clothes. That outfit of yours is totally out of style. You kids? Uh, buy me clothes? Don't sweat it, Hiram. We can afford it. Now that we've dug up this, tell us, Harold, how much is it worth? Uh, just in round numbers. Yeah, I'll give you the roundest number I know. Zero. Zero? It's worthless. Nothing but fool's gold. Watch. Oh. It broke apart. That was our last chance of saving Camp Candy. That reminds me. We'd better be getting back. John will be worried. Hiram, would you like to come back with us? <laughs> would I? You bet your mule I would. Hey, gorgeous. Where have you been all my life? Fuck off, you worm. Oh, listen. We were made for each other. I grow up, will ya? You mean like this? Oh, what a hunk! You're right! We were made for each other. Hubba hubba. Hey there, beautiful. Wait for me. Men. Meanwhile, back at the camp, I nearly wore out the lawn worrying about the kids. Oh, now, John, I'm sure the little darlings are all right. They've only been gone for a few hours. <laughs> but anything could happen to them out there. Those woods are full of hungry creatures. Oh, oh I, I think they brought one of them back with them. I was so happy they were safe, I couldn't even get angry at them for their going off without telling me. Am I ever glad to see you kids? Not nearly as glad as we are to be back. John, this is Hiram. We invited him to come back to camp with us. Very pleased to meet you, Hiram. We also invited him to stay for dinner. It's been a mighty long time since I sat down to a home-cooked meal here with good company. Fifty-seven years, to be exact. Can you imagine? Oh, goodness. You must really be hungry. Well, Hiram, I'm afraid your next meal might be in another fifty-seven years. You see, our kitchen burned down. Which means in one week, we won't have a camp, either. Oh, that's a dead blasted shame. Oh, maybe there's something I could do to... Oh, yeah! It's a horrible grass eating monster! Don't worry, kids! I'll save you! Oh, John, are you all right? Uh, can I get you something? Yes. Uh, how about a new kitchen? Looking after old Hiram was bad enough. But worse, Camp Candy was about to become history. Camp Candy sure had its share of problems. No money to rebuild the kitchen, and another non-paying guest. Poor Hiram. When it came to modern conveniences, he sure had lots of catching up to do. Hold still, Hiram. 
I'm helping to style your hair a tad. <laughs> it's an electric toothbrush. You just switch it on. But there was one thing old Hiram was an expert at, and that was cooking on a campfire. You name it, and he could whip it up in a matter of minutes. Anything from a leg of lamb to a roast turkey to barbecue spare ribs to egg foo young to a family-sized pizza complete with anchovies. Anchovies? Yuck! All right, forget the anchovies. I was merely citing an example. Mmm, Hiram, that was the most delicious meal I ever had. Yeah, me too. <coughs> Excuse me. Ditto for this dude. Truly awesome morsels. Possibly the most sumptuous beef jerky under glass I've ever tasted. Well... I'm glad y'all enjoyed it, because it's probably the last meal we'll ever have together here at Camp Candy. But I want you to know, I'd rather spend my last meal with you kids than with anyone else in the world. And Hiram, too? And Hiram, too. If I'd have known how downright nice folks could be, I wouldn't have spent all that time trying to avoid them. He was only 57 years. It's not like it was an entire lifetime. I think a toast is in order. It was probably the happiest day of Hiram's entire life. That is, until Rex DeForest III showed up. Hey, look out! He's a killer grasshopper from Mars! You run, everybody! He's before he just alive! Wait, Hiram! He's just some old loony. Besides, when that fire inspector shows up, you'll all have to clear out of here. <laughs> uh, it sure looked like Rex DeForest III was right. That night was one of the saddest moments I can ever remember. Talk about Mr. Redundant. In a few short days, Camp Candy would be closed for good. For a funny story, this is pretty depressing. Hey, the line between comedy and tragedy is very fine, all right? The campers took it kind of hard. I'm going to miss this place like crazy. And I'm going to miss all of you even more. Oh, what a tragedy. I could just cry. So I don't you. I said I could cry. I'm not actually going to. Do you know what those salty tears do to your complexion? Man, the moon is so bright, I've got to wear shades. It's even making my nose run. With me, it isn't the moonlight. It's the bugle music that always plays heck with my allergies. Oh. <laughs> Looks like I'm the only one here who's crying because the camp is closing. <laughs> I tell you, there wasn't a dry bunk in the whole place. Suddenly, it was morning. It smells like pancakes. It smells like bacon. It smells like heaven. It's French toast. It's sausages. It's Hiram. Good old Hiram. I knew he'd come back. There's the breakfast. But where's Hiram? And what's this thing? Holy guacamole. It's a gold nugget. That's just about the time I arrived on the scene. Hi, kids. Mmm. Say, what's that uh, delicious fragrance I smell? Mmm. Boy. Hiram was here. He left us breakfast. He also left us this. And there's a note with it. This here nugget is in payment for showing me that people are nothing to be afraid of. Thanks to you, I'm now ready to rejoin the human race. Sign. Now you can rebuild the kitchen. Sorry to burst your bubble, kids, but this is just fool's gold. It's totally worthless. Are you absolutely certain? Positive. Mineralogy happens to be one of my hobbies. Watch. This will prove it's fool's gold. Ow! Ooh. Hey, check out what's on the flip side of Hiram's note. It's a certificate from the assay office. It reads, this nugget is 99% pure gold. Signed the Bureau of Mineralogy. P.S. Only a fool would think it was fool's gold. See that? I told you it was valuable. 
Alex, what makes this really valuable is that it was given in the spirit of love, and that makes it 100% pure. With all that gold, it didn't take long to build a brand new Camp Candy kitchen. Okie dokie. Everything looks to be in order. Your camp has passed the inspection. Watch that! You mean he won't lose the camp? No, sir. But you might lose your house. M my house? Yes. I found two dozen fire violations. You've got exactly one week to fix them. Wait! They come back! <laughs> and that stock is over! <laughs> At least let me offer you a bribe! <laughs> <laughs> I sure wish old Hiram were here to see this. <laughs>